Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAdamation.com and welcome to another video of our GraphQL video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about understanding queries and this is part two of the same discussion that we were doing in our earlier video. In our earlier video, we discussed about the queries with variables, operation names and how you can work with fields and stuff. But in this video, we'll be talking about how we can work with fragments, directives, and mutations of queries. So this is another few ways that you can use while querying your data using GraphQL. And again, mutations is a different type altogether. Like it's not like a query itself. While you write the code, it will be a bit different while compared to you actually do the uh, queries. So let's see one by one, and then we'll talk about what these things are all about. So first of all, the fragments. So the fragments are very helpful while we try reusing our existing queries multiple times. For example, if we have a query like product name, description, and important components, name and description that we saw in our earlier video, where you can see that we are trying to pass in the same details again and again. But in order to reduce the duplication of typing the same thing again and again, we can actually use fragments. So fragments are more like a methods where you can see that it starts with a keyword called fragment, followed by the fragment name on the type that you are working, which is nothing but the product type. If you remember, we are working with the product type all these days. So we have to specify the product type. And then within the product type, we have the different fields like product name, description, components and stuff. So we have to pass in all those details. And we also can call that particular fragment within the query, something like this, as you can see on the right hand side, where we have the alias of the products like my product. And within that particular alias, we are just passing in dot 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 to call the fragment product details that we have in the left hand side. So we'll see how it actually works in an example. And then comes directives. So directives are also very helpful while we try to query just a specific fields within our query. For example, if we want to include a specific field, then we can just use at include directive. So there are only two directives available like at include and at skip, but with other frameworks of GraphQL, you can actually create your own directives and then you can use with it. I mean, those things we'll be talking later in the other series, which I'm gonna be creating on GraphQL development. But in this series, it's not needed. All you need to know is there is something called as directives, which includes an at include something like that. And you can specify if with a Boolean value there, like, do you want to display the price or not? Do so you want to include this property or not while you query your get operation? And the with price is something that we are passing in as an argument in the get price. And you can see that it is actually passing in over there with with price as false. So this is what is the directives. And finally, the mutations. So all these days we have been talking about what is called as the get operation. But using the mutations, we can do the post operations. Like here, we have a component, which is something I'm going to be creating newly altogether. So if I want to create a new component, then there is something called as mutations. And then I need to specify the dollar component of the component input. And then I need to call the mutation name, which is the create component. And then over there, I'm actually passing in the whole component. And that's going to return as the name description ID back once it is created. So I will show you all these advanced concepts that we are talking about over here in a much greater detail in our demonstration. So my application is up and running right now. So I'll go back once again to our GraphQL playground. And I will show you one by one that we have seen on the demonstration before. So let's start with the fragments. If you remember in these two queries that we have, the product one query and the product two query, we actually have got the same details over and over again over here. I mean, this is kind of confusing, right? Like, I mean, you are actually doing the same thing, but you're actually passing in like two times. And what if you don't have like products with different ID, probably uh, you just have like products, uh, something like that over here. And then you also have probably, I'm just going to remove this guy just for the simplicity sake. And then uh, for the product to query, I'm just going to be using the products as well, something like this. And you can see that both these query, except the queries name, they are pretty much exactly the same thing. 
So, uh, I mean, in this situation, so you were probably thinking that these are the two things that are probably retyped like two times. So how to overcome this problem in GraphQL? Well, that's what is the fragments all about. So we can actually use the fragments by just typing. And let me also remove this query variable because we are not going to be using it. And now let me type something called as a keyword called as fragment. So once I do that fragment, you will see that it automatically uh, showed me the keyword from the intelligence. And over here, I'm just going to type something like this. So I want to get the product details, which is nothing but these product details that I want to really get. And I also wanted to get on the type, which is nothing but the product type, because we also know that this product is actually of type products type. So I need to specify on the products type, something like this. And then I need to copy paste all these things that we are seeing over here. I mean, all of these, uh, and I'm going to paste it over here. So this is one of the fragment that I have created. And once it is created now, all I can do is I can just go back and delete this whole thing that we are seeing over here. And then I can just hit dot, dot, dot. And I can just call the product details fragments over here. That's it. So this way you can see that I don't really have to retype all the details that I really typed before. Rather, I can just type this dot 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 and then I can call the product details fragment which I just created which is this one and you can see that the query is now more neat and looking pretty interesting because it is doing pretty much exactly the same so you don't really have any difference of both of them well that's about the fragments itself that looks very neat right now and the next thing is going to be the directives Again, the directives are very simple as well. Like if you have a case where you just wanted to skip the uh, the price information from the products. So at the moment, you can see that we don't really have any price over here. So probably I'm just going to get rid of all these things just for the simplicity purpose. And let's type this once again, products. And then we have the uh, the name, the description, and the price that's it just three of them for now and if i wanted to just skip this particular price completely instead of showing this what i can do is like i can actually use what is called as directives by using at and you can see that there are only two directives available on the graphql at the moment so you can use either include or skip but using different frameworks you can customize you can write your own directives but that's not the scope of this particular uh, series. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. And let's say I want to skip this price. Uh, if you can see that it's a Boolean type with not nullable. And then I'm just going to say false. So if I just say false like that, so which means like it is a false negative, right? Like you're skipping as false, which means it is almost like you're not skipping it. So just let's say true over here. And if I run this, you will see that that particular price will not be displayed for us over here. So you can pass the same true or false from the argument which we saw in our earlier videos. I mean, that's something you can do it as well. And that's how the directives actually works. So you can also do the same opposite if you just do an include something like this. And if you just try running it, you will see that because you said include as true, it's going to include that for you. That's about the directives in the GraphQL. And these are very helpful while we do querying with the larger scale of uh, the fields within a query. Those things are very helpful as well. And finally, the last thing which I want to show you is going to be the mutation. So for the mutation, as you can see in the schema doc over here, we actually have got what is called as a component mutation. So this component mutation is nothing but it's going to create a component. As you can see, it is of a type component type. So that is something which is already there within my code over here. And I can quickly show you how it looks like. So if you go to the component mutation, you can see what I have did is I'm called, I'm writing a create component where I'm actually going to uh, name this as like component and I'm going to do a create component in the entity framework behind the scene. So this create component is going to be calling an I component repository, which is in turn going to call this create component uh, method, as you can see over here. So this create component is what I am interested in. So if I go to this create component, you can see that it is going to actually uh, call the product context, which is nothing but the entity frameworks DB context. 
and then it is going to be adding that component that I'm passing in and it's going to save the changes into the database and then it's going to return the component that I have created. And because I'm returning the component, I need to return that particular field as well. And that's what I'm going to be doing over here within the query. So let's see how it actually can be done. So for the mutations, you need to use this special keyword called as mutation. And over here on the mutation, I mean, you can pass the mutations as a parameter, as you know, because we are going to pack, create a new component altogether. So I need to pass something called as component. And then I'm just going to do a dollar. And then I'm just going to do a component of input not equal to. And you may be wondering, like, how do I know this? Because you remember the schema, I actually have the detail over here. That's exactly what I'm trying to use this time. So the create component, right? So this is the component of not equal to. And once I have this, then I need to call this create component method that I have within my mutation. And I need to pass the component. So I'm just going to pass the component of the dollar component that I'm going to be passing in from the query variable. And once I do that, I also need to return what has been saved for me, like descriptions and ID, something like that. I mean, I wanted to see the new component which is created and its detail. That's what I'm trying to return over here. All right, and now I'm going to pass the component within the query variable over here. In order to do that, I'm actually going to do this double quotes and you see that the intelligence is much intelligent enough to tell me what I'm passing in, which is nothing but the component. And I need to pass the name over here. Awesome. So all the intelligence is coming in. And let's say I want to create a new component. and I'm going to call this as gaming keyboard or something like that. And I also need to give it a description as just for gaming purpose. And I also need to give a product ID. So I want to associate this particular component to a product ID. Let's say I'm going to associate this to two probably. I don't even know if that's going to be a suitable thing, but I'm just going to do that. And now if I try executing this mutation, you can see that there is an ID of nine. It's a new ID altogether. And there is a gaming keyboard just for gaming has been created for us, which is cool. And now let's see if I try to get all the components. So I'm just going to use the query uh, get component. So you can see that I'm using an operation name here. And then I'm just going to call the components. And I want to get its name and description and ID probably. And if I try running the get components, over here and you can see that it actually shows me the gaming keyboard just for gaming over here so this is something which is created for me and i have associated this particular component to a product which is nothing but the product id of two so what if i try getting a product and see if that particular uh, component has been associated for me so i can just go get uh, the products so i'm just going to create another query um, for the product and I wanted to see if I pass the ID as two, then I wanted to see its name, uh, its description. And I actually am interested in its components, which has been created for me. Uh, so name and description. So let's see if that's going to be the case for us products. And you will see that the gaming keyboard is associated for me on this particular product, which is cool. So this is how we could keep querying as much customized as possible using GraphQL. And that's the power of Graph itself, guys. Like this is really, really simplistic, highly typed, and also much customizable the way we actually need to query the data. So that's about the GraphQL's much, much important basics. We also need to talk about something called a scalar types and how the types are actually being created on the GraphQL. Like in this case, I actually have a type called enum type for the product and I also have like component types and stuff. And I will actually show you all these things from the source code of the code that I have written instead of showing you in this particular playground.